Guess what guys, this is the brand new 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper Evo. I'm excited to go through the key updates with you as well as give you my initial ride impressions. Right off the bat, this thing has seen a lot of refinement. It has much greater adjustability and they've improved the suspension performance with an additional 10 millimeters of travel. Let's see if this thing is the ultimate trail bike. Game on. The Stump Jumper Evo truly evolved in 2018, taking the long, low, slack mantra to new extremes for the brand. It was a different beast with a 63 and a half degree head angle, super low standover, lengthy reach, and was clearly made for getting rowdy. Fast forward to today and Specialize is back with a new generation that continues to push their boundaries, but is far more accessible to more riders. This 29 inch bike now has 150 millimeters of rear travel, that's up from 140 millimeters, and 160 millimeter fork up front. Altogether, it's what Specialize is calling the ultimate trail bike. Previously, the Stump Jumper Evo was offered in just two sizes, designated S2 and S3, and it now comes in six sizes. That's a bigger range than any other specialized mountain bike. With reach values ranging from 408 to 528 millimeters, it will suit riders from sub five feet to six and a half feet tall. Thanks to low top tubes and seat tubes, you can also choose a size that suits your style. Want to pop around? Opt for something shorter. Want to plow? Go bigger. The S5 and S6 also get an extra 10 millimeters of chainstay length to keep balance in check as the front end grows. Each size has been stiffness tuned as well, so the S1 has a smaller down tube than the S6. At 5 feet 10 inches tall with a preference for reasonable reach values, I chose to ride an S3. Adjustability was another key goal for Specialized. Thanks to a new horse link flip chip with high and low settings, you can adjust the bottom bracket up and down by 7 millimeters. The low setting also extends the chain stays by five millimeters. Up front, the bike uses an eccentric upper headset cup to give you three head angle positions in one degree increments. Combining the two, you get six distinct geometry settings to suit any terrain. This means you can go from a slack low shred sled to an all day climber with a bottom bracket height from 331 millimeters to 343 and a head angle from 63 to 65.5 degrees. Both adjustments are really well done and easy to do. In the suspension department, the big goal was to add more comfort and control by bringing kinematic lessons learned from the Specialized Enduro. It's now more progressive with a more rearward axle path as the main pivot has been moved up a bit. The Specialized RX shock tune was chosen to give you room to go up or down in volume spacer size, and there are size specific rebound tunes as well. There is also a much wider clevis link now meant to put less stress on the shock and improve durability. Quick note here, there is no longer a 27.5 model of the Evo, but a geometry and kinematic adjusted aftermarket clevis is available for those guys wanting to go mullet style. Combined with the beefier rear triangle, altogether the rear end looks way more fitting of a bike with the Evo name. Stiffness tuning was a large part of the conversation this time around, and Specialized work closely with Loic Bruni in determining the stiffness balance front to rear on their bikes with the goal of making the frame have enough give that it's comfortable, but not so much that it's something that you notice. The sidearm chassis on the front triangle is a big part of this, and the shock is offset to the side just a bit. And how about this? I love that Specialized added about 20% more storage inside of the down tube SWAT compartment making space for a custom 22 ounce swatter bottle that will extend your range. There's also a nice pouch for spares in a tool housed in the bottle cage. In the spec department, the Butcher Grid Trail front tire has seen a major tweak with the move to a new softer rubber compound that specializes calling T9. This greatly improves the damping, making for a smoother ride and adding traction. Out back, they spec the faster rolling Eliminator Grid Trail tire with the more durable T7 compound. So, how does this thing ride? In a lot of ways, the previous model was a bike whose front end wrote checks that the back couldn't cash. The geometry would allow you to push really hard, but the rear suspension struggled in rough terrain. Well, I'm happy to report that they've made good on this front, substantially improving the suspension performance. It now devours square edge hits much better without any harsh kicks. It's supple on small bumps for plenty of traction, decently supportive in turns and while you're pumping, 
and it has sufficient bottom out support for most riders. If you want more though, there's room to add a bigger volume spacer. In the stock configuration, it has a predictable feel that pairs really well with the Fox 36 fork, and the 10 millimeters of extra travel front and rear makes a big difference. It's not overly playful or overly plowy, but it strikes a nice balance without any surprises so you can focus on what's ahead. On the geometry front, the slack head angle helps slow things down when things are steep and deep, yielding excellent control. Paired with the new front tire, there's great front end grip, and it retains some good cornering manners as well. Just lean it in and go. And what about the climbs? All right guys, welcome to 12,500 feet. We're here up above Durango, Colorado, getting our high country on. Turns out she pedals just fine too. I found that the Stump Jumper Evo pedals really well with a lightweight feel, nice upright seated position, and no need for the shocks climb switch. I appreciated the ability to spin up some heinous high country climbs with a 30 tooth chain ring and the new 52 tooth SRAM cassette. Some people will argue that that's a little bit too easy, but hey, I'm all about the convenience. The rear end conforms to terrain really well while you're climbing without bobbing and blowing through the travel, keeping good traction and a sense of efficiency that won't leave you gassed. Nice. If you're in tighter, flatter, rough and chunky terrain, the high geometry adjustment makes a perceptible difference and can help quicken the steering and pick your pedals up off the ground. Altogether, this is a very comfortable, quiet, reassuring ride that is ready to roll out of the box. The only thing I'd ask for is a bit of a burlier casing on the rear tire, which is currently loaded up with tire plugs. Definitely had a few punctures out there. I love the convenience of the SWAT system, excellent frame protection in the places that count, the fully guided cable routing that goes in the front and out the back without any hassle, and the fact that it's surprisingly good in the weight game. So, is this the ultimate trail bike like specialized clams? Well, the fact that it's highly adjustable makes it ready for a huge range of rides. Whether it's a big backcountry mission, pointing it down some secret steeps, or a day at the bike park. For the descent loving rider, it's definitely a great pick and it's right up vital MTB's alley. It's clear Specialized didn't leave anything on the table with this one, delivering the full package with dialed details throughout, great handling, and much improved suspension performance. Now, I know you're wondering, with the introduction of a new Stump Jumper Evo, could a new Stump Jumper also be on the way? That could certainly make sense. Keep it locked on Vital for more. All right guys, that's a wrap on the new 2021 Specialized Stump Jumper Evo. It's pretty cool to see all the updates they've made to this bike. I think it's a good improvement. Be sure to visit vitalmtb.com and specialized.com for more details. And hey, if you've enjoyed this video, smash that like button, give it a thumbs up, and we'll see you on the trails.